Good morning, class. Hey, we're on lesson 34 today. Our objective is to learn how to divide with zeros in the quotient. Now, some key words are quotient. And the quotient is the answer to a division problem. So we're going to divide, but there's going to be a zero in there. Sometimes it's going to be in the middle, sometimes it's going to be at the end, and sometimes it's going to cause us to have a remainder. Now, this lesson I wanted to teach you on my desk rather than on the board so that you can see what your powers look like. It's the start of the second quarter, and we want you to guys to start off on a good foot. If you want A-plus on your power-ups, you need to fill up the front, the side, the answers. And today we had the little tree there. When you flip it over and divide into six, this all needs to be filled up. Here's what it should look like. Here's example number one that I would normally do on the board. We'll do it right in the box like you should normally be doing it. 365 is the amount of days uh, in a year, and we want to divide that by six. So let's go ahead. How many times does six go into three? Oh, quick review. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. Do it again. The more times you say that, the better your brain is going to remember it. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. Do it again. How many times three going? Six going to three? Zero. Now we don't have to write a zero at the beginning. Well, how many times six go into thirty-six? Now, if you're one of those people that likes to use your chart, get on the six, slide down. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. Shoot out to the side and you got a 6. Second step, multiply. 6 times 6 is 36. Third step, subtract. You notice how we're using the number we just wrote. 36 minus 36 is 0. Bring down the 5. Do it again. How many times does 6 go into 5? Well, you can't. Now, if I just leave it like this, I'd have my answer wrong. You got to answer this question. How many times is six going five zero? And you have to put the placeholder there. Now it's really important that we keep all this stuff all lined up because if I'd have had a six here, it'd look like I was done. But the answer isn't six. The answer is sixty. Well, zero times six is zero. Subtract, you get five. Remainder five. So that's what we did today. We have a zero in the quotient. Now you can always check this one. Check a problem. Check a problem. Check, check, check. 60 times 6. 6 times 0 is 0, and 6 times 6 is 36, plus the remainder, 365. Awesome. Piece of cake for today. If you've been working really hard on your long division, no problems. Let's go on to example number 2 down at the bottom. A train travels 630 kilometers in 6 hours. To find the average speed of the train, divide 630 divided by 6. 630 kilometers divided by 6 hours. How many times is 6 going to 6? 1. Second step, multiply. 1 times 6 is 6. See, I'm keeping it all nice and lined up. Subtract. 0. Bring down. 3. How many times is 6 going to 3? None. You have to write the 0 there. Notice it's a placeholder. Without it, our answer would be way too small. We're going to multiply with it. 0 times 6 is 0. I know you knew that. Bring down the 3. I'm sorry, subtract 3. Bring down the 0. How many times does 6 go into 30? 5 times. 5 times 6 is 30, and you get 0. Now, guys, if you wouldn't have the 0 in there, you'd have 15. How would you like to have $15 instead of $105? It makes a big difference. So today we're dividing with a zero in the quotient. Lesson 34, dividing with a zero in the quotient. Example number three. An object on the moon has a different weight than the same object on Earth. That's We have already learned that in reading because there's less gravity on the moon. To estimate the weight of an object on the moon, divide the weight of Earth by six. So Jason weighs 115 pounds. Estimate the number of pounds he would weigh on the moon. So first of all, let's go ahead and divide this. 115, pardon me, 115 divided by 6. And now we're going to go and try to find compatible numbers. I like to do it like this. What number close to 11 is divisible by 6? And that's 12. So we're going to round this one to 120 divided by 6. That's going to make this problem way easier. Estimating always makes it easier. Well, how many times does 6 go into 12? Two times. 
I should have asked how many times is 6 going to 1? None. Now we move on. Remember, we don't need a 0 in front. 2 times 6 is 12. Bring down the 0. How many times is 6 going to 0? Zero? 0. We have to have a space here. Notice there's a number here, so we have to have a number of that. 0 times 6 is 0. Subtract 0 and shazam! We got it. Now, what is that? Oh my goodness, he's only 20 pounds on the moon? That'd be like the best diet I ever went on my entire life. Head to the moon. I weigh less. All right, guys, so we were working on quotients with zeros in it. Let's take a couple look at a couple in our um, lesson practice for today. In your fourth box, go ahead and write 61 divided by 3. How many times does 3 go into 6? 3 goes into 6 two times. 2 times 3 is 6. Subtract and you get 0. Bring down the 1. How many times is 3 going to 1? 0. You have to have the 0 as a placeholder, and the 1 becomes your remainder. Check a problem, check a problem. Check, check, check. 20 times 3 equals 60, plus your remainder is 61. Let's jump down to E now, do a little bit tougher one. 122 divided by 4. Go ahead and cover it up. How many times is 4 go into 12? 4 goes into 12 three times. Second step, multiply. 3 times 4 equals 12. Third step, subtract. 12 minus 12 is 0. Fourth step, bring down the 2. Now 4 is bigger than 2, so obviously 4 goes into 2. 0 times. 0 times 4 is 0. Subtract, and that 2 becomes my remainder. Last one. Let's see if we can find the hardest one out there. Boom, right here. 4,818 divided by 8. How many times does 8 go into 4? Can't. How many times does 8 go into 48? Hopefully you're sliding down the 8s, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, shoot out to the side, and that's a 6. 6 times 8 is 48, subtract, you get 0. Bring down the 1. Now the 1's teeny, 8 can't go into 1, so you go 0. Now I'm going to give you a shortcut method. You don't really have to go 0 times 8 because you know that's 0, and 1 minus 0 is 1. You can just leave the 1 there and slide that 8 right down. My new number is 18. How many times is 8 going to 18? And it's twice. 2 times 8 is 16. And when I subtract 18 minus 16, I get 2. Remainder, 2. All right, guys. That's what your power-up should look like every single day, filled up with the example problems and the lesson practice problems. All right, A pluses, A plus, A pluses is what we're going for. I'll be back in my next video to give you a little help with lesson 34.